Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Let's jump into macroeconomics unit four and talk about financial assets. This is you. This is you with a lot of money. This is you wondering what you should do with all of it. And this is me helping you figure it out. Back in unit two, you learned about the circular flow model, GDP, and producing goods and services. But here in unit four, we're talking about the financial sector, which involves lenders, borrowers, and money. When you think about money, you probably think about the cash that's in your wallet that's issued by the government. But economists argue that money could be anything that's generally accepted for goods and services. This is a shrewd buck. When you have done something good, you will receive one shrewd buck. So for economists, money is anything that serves three purposes or has three functions. Medium of exchange, unit of account, and a store of value. That is something that can be used by goods and services, something that you use to measure the relative value of things, and something that allows you to hold your purchasing power and use it in the future. So money doesn't need to be issued by the government, it just needs to be something that we all agree has value. Very good. You have earned one shrewd buck. I don't want it. The classic example of this are the large stone discs that were used for money on Yap Island in Micronesia. What's that? <gasps> Me first time. If they wanted to pay someone in their village for a good or for their daughter's dowry, they just said, okay, now you own this stone disc. And oftentimes they didn't even move them. Now there's a couple terms here that you might see on a quiz or a test, commodity money and fiat money. Commodity money like gold has intrinsic value and you can do other things with it other than use it for money. And its value comes from the fact that it's shiny and pretty and useful. Fiat money, like the cash that's in your wallet has no other purposes and its only value comes from the fact that we all kind of agree it's valuable. Don't you want to earn shrewd bucks? But money doesn't even need to be a physical, tangible object. In fact, most of our money is just ones and zeros in computers at banks. That's because when economists talk about money, they're talking about cash and currency and circulation and also checkable deposits. This is all the money that's out there in checking accounts. The reason why they count this in the money supply is because you can go buy a pizza with cash, but you can also write a check and that's a medium of exchange. And that explains how economists classify money. M1 money is currency in circulation, checkable deposits, which is checking accounts, and traveler's checks. M2 is near money. It includes everything in M1, plus money and savings accounts, CDs, and money market funds. The point is this is all money because it has high liquidity. It can be quickly and easily converted into something that can be used as a medium of exchange. By the way, if you're asking yourself, when are we gonna learn about the relative value of different currencies from different countries? Well, that's called foreign exchange, and we'll learn it in unit six. I'll give you a billion Stanley Nichols if you never talk to me again. What's the ratio of Stanley Nichols to shrewd bucks? The same as the ratio of unicorns to leprechauns. So the cash in your pocket and the funds in your checking account are money, but other assets like real estate, bonds, and stocks, that's not money. These assets have low liquidity. It takes a lot of time to convert them into something they can use to go buy a pizza. But the reason you might want to own stocks and bonds as opposed to keeping all your money in your checking account is because these earn more in the future. For example, if you bought Tesla stock in the beginning of 2020, you would have paid about 86 bucks. At the end of 2020, it was over $700. Now that's an outlier. Stocks usually don't go up that fast. In fact, sometimes they go down. If you bought stock in Carnival Cruise Lines during the same period of time, your asset would have gone from $50 down to less than 20. But the point is these are both examples of stock or equities, which represents ownership in a company. And that's different than bonds. Bond. James Bond. Bonds are also called securities and they're just IOUs issued by corporations and the government. They usually give you less risk and less returns than stocks. Unlike stocks, when you own a bond, you don't own any of the company. You're just gonna get paid back at a set interest rate. You're the lender and the company or the government is the borrower. So when you buy a bond, you give them your money and they're agreeing to pay you a set predetermined interest rate in the future. And in addition to the stock market, there's also a bond market we can go buy previously issued bonds. So instead of somebody else getting the interest, I can buy the bond and I'll get paid the interest. That means there's a negative relationship between interest rates and bond prices. Assume that there was a bunch of previously issued bonds at 3% and interest rates go up to 10%. Well, I'm gonna want that. I'm not gonna want those previously issued bonds. I'd rather have the higher return. So the amount that I'd be willing to pay for those previously issued bonds would go down. But if the interest rate for new bonds fell to 1%, well, I'd rather have the 3% bonds so the price would go up for those bonds. The point is for your test and your class, remember a negative relationship between interest rates and bond prices. So going back to the beginning of this video, if you get a lot of money, what should you do? Keep it as cash, stocks, bonds, real estate? Well, that's not something you're really gonna learn in an economics class. That's more personal finance. If you really wanna learn the details and take a finance class or a business class, because economics is more general, but it lays the foundation of all of it. So you're still gonna need it. Ooh, economics, very, very interesting.
Now to help you remember the key concepts in this video, especially the three functions of money and bond prices, I've got this, it's a stone disc from Yap Island. And on the backside, I have interest rates and bond prices. Just remember, they're inversely related. If interest rates go up, bond prices are gonna fall. But don't go anywhere, there's still two things we have to do. First, if you like this video, then you're gonna love the Ultimate Review Pack. It includes study guides, summary videos, practice sheets, practice multiple choice questions, practice exams, everything you need to get an A in your class and rock your exams. Plus, it's a great way of saying, hey, thanks Clifford for making all these free videos on YouTube. And the second thing, it's time for a pop quiz. No, 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 no. No! The questions won't be on the screen for very long, so pause the video, see how you do, and look at the answers in the first comment below. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Until next time.